24, compound Y can be hydrolyzed by silver nitrate and we form a precipitate that is soluble in dilute aqueous ammonia. Right. Which one could be compound Y? Now, when this halogen alkanes are hydrolyzed and reacted with silver nitrate, we will get precipitates. Silver bromide, silver iodide, silver chlorides and all that. Now, the thing about this precipitates is silver chloride will be the one that can dissolve in dilute aqueous ammonia. Right? Silver bromide will not be soluble. Silver iodide will not be soluble in aqueous ammonia. So we are down to C and D. Compound can undergo elimination reaction to form an alkene. Okay. It might be clearer if you were to draw the structure. So This is the structure for C. 1, 2, 3, 4 carbons. With the chlorine, this is the structure for D. Okay. Carbon, surrounded by 3 methyl groups. And then we have CH2, Cl. For them to undergo elimination, what actually have to happen is we have to get rid of the halogen and we have to get rid of a hydrogen from a neighboring carbon. So if you were to take a chlorine from this carbon, the carbon that's next to that particular carbon has to supply the hydrogen. Okay. And when that happens, we will get a double bond forming. Right. So C is the answer. Why not D? If you were to take this chlorine, we have to take a hydrogen from the neighboring carbon and the neighboring carbon to this carbon here is this carbon and you notice that this carbon has no hydrogen to supply there's no hydrogen that can be taken away together with this Cl so this will not undergo elimination reaction to form the alkene so D is out the answer is C Right, 25. 25, you have this structure. I've drawn two structures on the left and the right, which I'll be using later. We have this structure that when heated with concentrated sulfuric acid, it actually will be dehydrated, meaning the OH will be gone, and then it will be removing a hydrogen from the neighboring carbons. Now, what could the structure be? If you were to remove the OH and then we remove the H from here, the double bond will be formed between these two carbon. We will get this structure. If we were to remove the OH and we remove the H from this carbon, we will get this structure. Okay. So if you were to compare the options that we have, D is the answer. It doesn't really look like this when you first look at it, but actually if you turn it around or if you flip it over, right, it is the same structure as D.